Because it's, it, it's a yearly cycle. But either way, we know it's one of the three feasts that the Lord gave in Leviticus 23. Acts 18 and verse 18. Go ahead. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Centuria, mm -hmm. for he had a vow. Uh -huh. And he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. Uh -huh. Now he reasoned with his brothers, the Jews. Go ahead. When they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not. Uh -huh. But bade them farewell, saying, I but must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem, uh -huh. but I will return again unto you if God will. And he sailed to e he sailed from Ephesus. You mean Paul was keeping all the feasts, wasn't he? We just saw all of them. We saw it. Don't say which one, but this is Tabernacles. But we saw clearly it was unleavened bread after this, and then because that's what come after this one. Tabernacles is the last one. Then you go back to the new year. You got unleavened bread. Then you got Pentecost. Then it's back to Tabernacles again. So he was still observing. So how can people tell us in the New Testament God's holy days and his feast days were done away with, but you read that Paul was observing? All of them, including the Sabbath day. We saw Jesus observe. Somebody got the wrong idea about the New Testament, don't they? Right. Let's go back to Leviticus now. Leviticus 23. Because now we're going to get into the last ones. Which come at the end of the year, which is really what Paul was just talking about. The one he was just going to Jerusalem to celebrate. Leviticus 23 and 23. And again, these words came out of God's mouth. So people should be careful how they put down and belittle something God spoke. That's why the title is God's Holy Day. 23 and 23. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, ye shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. See, now he gave another holy day, a memorial. It's a Sabbath day. That means you don't work on this day. And it's called the memorial blowing of the trumpets. Moses didn't come up with it. God came up with it. Now remember, Paul said God's holy days are a shadow of something. But he called man's tradition and the weak and beggarly. He called them weak and beggarly elements. That's what he called man's traditions. But God's holy days are pointing to something. God is showing you something. So now let's see what this one is about a little bit. Just briefly, let's go to uh, Psalm 81. Memorial blowing of the trumpets. God is something. He wants you to even have a day where you're going to recognize simply the blowing of trumpets. See, and again, if you're going to do something, you might as well do what the Lord said in the Bible. That's the safe way. Even if you're not sure, you say, well, I don't think God would be mad. Well, just be safe. It's better to be safe than sorry. Because I can tell you point blank, you're going to be in trouble for doing the other stuff. You know, but since since if you're going to do something, you might as well. Why not honor the memorial of blowing of the trumpets instead of getting some eggs and hiding them from the kids on Christmas? Right. <laughs> I mean, just get some trumpets at the right time and blow them for the kids or something. Do, you know, do what the Lord say do. And we're going to be here having a holy convocation, so we're going to help you out. Right. So it's just that simple. He said, have a memorial blowing of the trumpets. This is one of God's holy days. Psalm 81 and 1. Go ahead. Sing aloud unto God our strength. Uh -huh. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. Uh -huh. Take a psalm. Bring hither a timbrel, the pleasant harp with the psaltery. Uh -huh. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon and the time appointed on our solemn feast day. See, this is even in Psalm. He said, blow up the trumpet in the new moon. Now, you can read this. People have done away with this. Now, if he... Now, I can see you doing what you're doing if you said, paint some Easter eggs on Easter. Then, okay, I can see you doing that. But he didn't say that, did he? Nope. Nowhere in the Bible. But we're going to do something man, man has concocted. But what the Lord has said, which is just as easy for you to do once you make your mind up, we ignore that. He said, blow up the trumpet in the new moon on our, at the appointed time, on our solemn feast day. Go ahead. 
For this was a statue for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. Okay, back up to Psalm 47 now. See, if you're going to sing and praise the Lord, you might as well do it for the right reason. Psalm 47. See, God gives you reasons for what he's doing. It has meaning and significance. He's not just giving you something to do that don't, make, that don't mean nothing. He's showing you what he's about. Man concocts stuff in honor of a false god. Psalm 47 and 1. Go ahead. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible. Uh -huh. He is a great king over all the earth. Uh -huh. He shall subdue the people under us the, and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. See, this holy day that he gave you about memorial, the blowing of the trumpets, it's showing you in advance what God is going to do. See, not only did Israel conquer Jericho by blowing some trumpets in, in Joshua. You read Joshua 6 on your own. That's even pointing to a bigger picture that God's going to do. Because Paul knew what he was talking about when he told the Colossians, don't let nobody stop you from keeping God's holy days, judge you in that. Because they are a shadow of things to come. Well, here's an example. The memorial of the blowing of the trumpets is a shadow of God taking over the world. That's what we honoring when we recognize that. We are recognizing what God is going to do in the future. That's why he said, it's talking, and notice it's talking about him ruling the earth, not going to heaven. That's right. Verse 2 said, for the Lord most high is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. But that, that's not evident right now because he's not running things. But when them trumpets sound, that's when it's going to be evident. Verse 5. God is going up with a shout. Oh, it's going to be a shout. Thessalonians tell you about the shout and the trumpet. People are going to make that a rapture. No, Jesus is coming to take over the world. Amen. Period. He's telling you what he's doing here with the shout and the trumpet. That's a, First Thessalonians 4 say the same thing, but they turn that, twist that into something else. Now, what is he doing? God is going up with a shout. Go ahead. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Go ahead. Sing praises to God. Mm -hmm. Sing praises. Go ahead. Sing praises unto our king. Sing praises. Sing praises. Go ahead. How though? For God is king over all the earth. See, he's going to be king over all the earth at this time. God is king over all the earth. Go ahead. Sing ye praises with understanding. See, singing is fine, but you need understanding. That's better. That's more important. So if you get to understand it, then singing is real good. But Praise now, go to Revelation 11. Revelation 11. Let's bring it all the way down to the end now. So what started in Leviticus would seem like a meaningless holy day that man didn't decide it don't matter no more. Even the people that say they celebrate Rosh Hashanah, that don't have nothing to do with this. They do it on the same day, but they aren't in something else. Because Rosh Hashanah don't have nothing. Though they talk about trumpets, it don't mean trumpet itself. They, matter of fact, that's why they call it a new year. <laughs> this don't have nothing to do with, this day we're reading about right here don't have nothing to do with a new year. Mm -mm. That's what they talking about though. They honoring something else. So they don't even understand. But here's why he got you honoring the trumpet. This is how it's going to climax. Revelation 11 and 15. Go ahead. And the seventh angel sounded. And the seventh angel sounded what? A trumpet. This is the last one. Revelation 8 says seven angels going to get seven trumpets from God and they're going to blow them. And each trumpet is going to instigate a plague until the last one. The plague is going to be the Lord himself coming in flame and fire to take over this world. And that's what the seventh, that's why it's been announced here. And the seventh angel sounded, and what did it say? Go ahead. And there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, mm -hmm. and he shall reign forever and ever. So when we celebrate the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets, we know we honor in God, right? But we even know the reason we honor in God for what he's getting ready to do in a short while. When, the, when these seven angels blow these seven trumpets, and that is he's going to conquer the whole world. See, so some of the, I wish some of the kids get smart and start asking their parents, Mama, why you got me painting these Easter eggs? What God care about that? <laughs> no, nah, because you aren't enough fertility goddess when you do that. Right. Mm -hmm. See, don't have nothing to do with the Lord. Right. You ain't got nowhere where he give you eggs as a symbol of Jesus, do you? Nope. So who is it a symbol of? You need to figure that out. 
But we got all the symbols we need, right? The trumpet is an important symbol to God, isn't it? It's in the Bible. He said it's a holy day. See, man that lied to you and gave you corrupted holy days. So they call them holiday. That's a corruption. They done lied to you. But now, let's go further. Leviticus, back to Leviticus 23. We're going to wrap it up. Leviticus 23. So we didn't we didn't read about the Sabbath day, the weekly Sabbath. That's the constant holy day. We read about the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. We read about the 50th day Pentecost. We just read about the memorial of the trumpets. Now we're going to read about the Day of Atonement. Leviticus 23 and verse 26. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying... Again, who said it? The Lord. The Lord is doing the talking here. So don't put, don't belittle what the Lord is saying. You know, I know God going to really deal with some people because people talk crazy about what God is saying. They make that like that's dirt. He said, again, the Lord said unto Moses, spake unto Moses, saying, 27, go ahead. Also on the 10th day of this seventh month. Also on the 10th day of this seventh month. The trumpets get sounded on the first day. Now on the tenth day, see, it's everything going to climax in the seventh month. That's the end of all things. Right here. He said the tenth day of this seventh month, there should be what? There shall be a day of atonement. Another holy day. Go ahead. It shall be a holy convocation unto you. Another holy convocation for you to have. Go ahead. And ye shall afflict your soul. And you got to afflict your soul. That means you're going to fast. You're going to have a complete fast on this day. Because you're honoring something else. That's how you're going to celebrate this day, by not eating anything, by completely fasting. That's what the affliction is. Go ahead. And offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. See, and they had set offerings to do, but all that was pointing to Jesus. So you still got the offering. You know the offering is Jesus. He made it, and you acknowledge him that he made it for you when you do all of this stuff. Go ahead. And you shall do no work in that same day. Don't work. Honor the Lord on this day. Go ahead. For it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. Oh, we, we had to have it. Go ahead. For whatsoever soul it, should, it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. It's serious business. Go ahead. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. God wasn't playing, was he? He said, you, you fumble around, don't do what I'm telling you to do, I will destroy you. The same soul that don't do it, I'm going to destroy. Again, this wasn't Moses talking. This was God. Go ahead. You shall do no manner of work. No manner of work. See, he didn't say servile because he, he didn't even give you room to cook none because you ain't got to cook or feast or do nothing because you're going to do nothing on this day. But you're going to have a holy convocation. We get together. We get together on the day of atonement. We had to cover the water, cover the water fountain up, make sure don't nobody drink nothing. Because that's what he said. Afflict yourself. It's a great celebration, though. Praise the Lord. Now, the Edomites celebrate this, and the name do mean, in Yiddish, Yom Kippur, do mean Day of Atonement. See, I know when they got it right, I know when they got it wrong. But they don't know how Jesus playing that. See, they don't even know about Jesus. Because they like the old school Israelites, because that's who converted them. Mm -hmm. So that's all they know. But when they celebrate the day, Yom Kippur, that is the Day of Atonement. But go ahead. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generation. Forever? In you mean you keep this forever? It didn't get right. done away with? When Christ came? Well, we saw none of the others did. We saw Paul kept unleavened bread after Christ came and left, right? That's right. Paul kept Pentecost after Christ came and left. He kept the other feasts after Christ came and left. He kept the Sabbath after Christ came and left. So they didn't get done away with. He even kept this one after Christ came and left. Because you had to afflict yourself. He said, you, it shall be a statue forever throughout your generations. Where? In all your dwellings. So wherever you at, even if you're in America, you can acknowledge this. That's right. Go ahead, 32. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. See, it's a Sabbath. It's just a high Sabbath. Like John 19 tells you when Jesus died, the next day was a high Sabbath. He, he didn't say weekly Sabbath. High Sabbath was a different. That's one of the annuals that we're reading about. First day and the seventh day, unleavened bread, a high Sabbath. Passover is a memorial. Pentecost is a high Sabbath. The trumpets, the memorial of the trumpets is a high Sabbath. And this day, the Day of Atonement, is a high Sabbath. And we'll get to the last two, 
when we get to the uh, last festival. But now, he said, it shall be to you a Sabbath of rest. Go ahead. And ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. See, it's on the tenth day, but you start the sundown before. 